I am so excited to be with you. What time do I have to be with you until? 10.45, okay. I am excited to be with you because I get to talk about my favorite person in the whole, 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 whole world. I want to write his name, but I need help. What is your name, sweetie? Alex. Hi, Alex. I'm Mark, nice to meet you. Alex, what color is my paint? It's black, that's right. Do you think I can make yellow letters with black paint? Well, let's see. With Alex's help, here, blow on my brush. Ooh, that's a good blow. That's, you know, lots of breath there. You're like, you could blow down the house of the little piggies. <laughs> I'm excited because I get to talk about my favorite person today, and his name is? Jesus. I'm excited. If you look into the yellow blocks, you'll see letters appear because of Alex. How about a round of applause for Alex? <laughs> Yay, Alex. Good job, buddy. All right. But we celebrated a holiday last month. Do you remember what it is? Easter. Easter. What does Easter commemorate? What do we celebrate for that? No, you already answered. Someone else. Shout it out. What happened? What do we celebrate on Easter? Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead. Right. Is it about bunnies that poop out chocolate eggs? No. No. Although if you do find a bunny that poops out chocolate eggs, that's pretty cool. But. Jesus rising from the dead is even cooler than that. And so, now, and I know you're thinking, Mark, why are we talking about Easter? It's May now. Because it's awesome. Because when you know Jesus, you, you get excited about him all year round. But Easter didn't just start with, you know, Jesus dying on a cross and rising from the dead. It started way before then. Way, way, way. Even before I was born. I know, when I'm like 50. So this is like a long time ago. A long time ago, God created a world out of nothing. Nothing. He didn't go to Home Depot and buy dirt and grass seed and light bulbs. He just said, let there be light with no light bulbs because God is powerful. He can't, you guys can't do that. Now, you guys could make light if you wanted to, but you'd have to go buy light bulbs and chandeliers and electricity and don't play with electricity. Okay? I don't want anybody to don't do that. But that's how you would make light. Like God made it just by speaking it. And not only did he make light, but he made, he made this wet blue stuff. What's that called? Water. Water. And in the water, he said, I want things to swim in the water. And they're called? Fish. Fish, that's right. And sometimes they're a big fish with a big scary fin. And when they swim around, they go... What are those called? Sharks. Sharks. Now, do the sharks eat the fish? Yes. No, because God made the world perfect and there was no death back then. Sharks wouldn't eat, no, today they will, yes, sharks would eat lots of fish, and they eat surfers, and they eat all kinds of things. But back then, they didn't eat any of that. They, they just ate, like, uh, the green stuff that's floating in the water. No, not your boogers, the, uh, the other green stuff. The, uh, you know, algae, right, they ate all that. Seaweed. Right. Seaweed, right, there you go. And God made this guy, and he's like a big kitty cat, but he purrs really loud. What's he called? A lion. And what does the lion say? Yeah. Right. I'm not lying. Get it? I'm not lying. Uh, and then God made this cute little guy. And let me put a face on him. And a little ears. And I'll put some legs. And what's he called? A sheep. A sheep, right. Now, what would a lion normally do to a sheep? Kill it. Kill it and eat it. But not back then because there was no sin back then. See, the sheep wasn't bad. Okay? There was no... So a lion could hang out with a sheep. You could take a nap with a polar bear. Don't nap with polar bears today. Because it's not the same back. In the Garden of Eden, nobody killed each other. But back, but today they do. So if you see a polar bear, run for your life. Okay? But back then, you could have napped with it. You could rub its tummy. How cool? Wouldn't that be nice? I'd love to do that. Um, but anyway. And God made things that fly in the air. What are they called? Birds. Birds. That's right. And he even made bugs that fly in the air. And if they land on you, they didn't bite you. Because there was no shedding of blood back then. How cool you could have mosquitoes and black flies and all those things that land on you. Even those things are called no-see-ems. You see the no-see-ems where they're so small you don't see them? That's why they call them no-see-ems. But they, like, they bite you and it's annoying. But not back then. And then, and God gave all kinds of good food for the people and for the, uh, the animals to eat. Like berries and all kinds of stuff. But you didn't eat other animals. People were like vegetarians. And not like today when vegetarians are like thin and sickly and annoying and constantly trying to get you to be a vegetarian too. No, it was a good type of vegetarian back then. 
I'm kidding about vegetarians, but only a little bit, okay? <laughs> so, and here are some bananas, in case, you know, there are monkeys or teenage boys around. Yeah. And, uh, and some other berries, you know, there's all kinds of good stuff. And then God made, so he said, I want to make the apple of my eye. And he made man. Now, man had a big problem. Can you tell what man's problem is? What? Yes. Doesn't have a head. That's right, but I can paint the head on him. This is how you get a head in life. Okay. okay. And... But the man did have a problem. See, the man, he didn't, like, he wanted to wear a tie that had stripes, but maybe he was wearing a shirt with polka dots and that would clash. And he needed someone to say, you can't go all dressed like that. That's ridiculous. So God made a woman. That's right. And that's woman's job is to tell men how ridiculous we look if we dress that way. Believe me, I've been married 25 years. I know. That's what they do. Now, when I paint a woman, that's not all that they do. They do lots of good stuff, too. Very good stuff. And they smell nice. Like, have you smelled a boy, teenage boys? The smell doesn't get better as we get older. <laughs> but my wife smells nice, I don't know how it smells it. Anyway, so when I think of women, I always do pretty hair, and they're holding hands because they're married. God made marriage, marriage is good. God made marriage, not the government. So the government can tell you what marriage is, but if it's different than what God says, we believe God. Okay, that's just a side thing. You can hold on to that later. All right, so God made man and women, and they were naked and not ashamed. I know, but here's the thing. Who here has ever had a nightmare? Yeah, do you like it? No. no. Who here has ever fallen and hurt yourself? Do you like it? No. Who here has ever gotten bullied by someone before? Do you like it? No. In the, in the Garden of Eden, there was none of that because there was no evil in the Garden of Evil. There was nothing wrong. Okay? People didn't have nightmares. They didn't hurt themselves. They didn't ever feel bad. They only felt good. But that's not what made the Garden of Eden wonderful. What made the Garden of Eden wonderful is who you got to be with. Is that you got to be with God himself. You were with God. Like, I know it's awesome to be like, to be able to hang out with polar bears and to have mosquitoes not bite you. That's all cool. But what's better is that you got to be, you got to hang out with God and walk with him. Now you and I get to be with God too today by reading his Bible, praying, and, and that's great. But that's not like being with him physically. Like that's pretty cool. God even made these big animals. They start small. But they lived for hundreds of years, so they grew big, and they're happy because life was good. What are they called? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. That's right. Now we don't know what color dinosaurs were because we, we all they we all we, we have are their bones, so we don't know. So if you want to paint a dinosaur, if you want to paint brown like I did, that's fine. If you want to paint them red, that's fine. Green, blue, yellow, whatever you want. The only thing, if you're going to paint a dinosaur from the Garden of Eden, you cannot paint it purple. Because there was no sin in the Garden of Eden. There was nothing annoying. And that purple dinosaur that you see on TV that sings to you is super annoying. There was no way the dinosaurs were purple in the Garden of Evil. Because I can't stand that dinosaur. Neither you. you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, if, yeah if he's annoying. If your parents watch that show with you, then they really love you a lot. Okay? I, th I watched it with like my first child. And it's not that I love my second, third, fourth child less. It's just that, no, I'm not watching Bart again. I'm done. I'm done with that. Okay, but my kids are like in their 20s now. Anyway, this has nothing to do with the talk. Why am I talking about this? So, God made everything perfect. No death. No sickness. And God said, if you break my, my rules. And by the way, they only had one rule, just one. You and I have lots of rules. We have to do our homework. We have to clean our bed. We have to finish our food. We gotta put things away. We have to not light poodles on fire. We have to do all these things. But Adam and Eve only had one rule. You can eat from here, from here, from here, from all over the place. There's just one tree that I don't want you to eat food from. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And by the way, Adam and Eve already knew good. So the only knowledge that they would get is evil. So when God said don't eat from that, it's not that God's being a jerk. He's being good and kind to them. Because they already knew good. They knew him. They knew God. They eat from this tree. They're gonna, now they're going to know evil. They're going to know suffering. They're going to know about famines. They're going to know about diseases. They're going to experience death. They're going to live in a world where Lady Gaga could be a star. It's going to be terrible. 
And, and God said, just don't do that. Imagine going to the grocery store. You can eat anything you want. You can have all the ice cream you want. You can have all the cotton candy you want, all the potato chips that you want, all the cabbage jelly that you want, all the things that you love that are so good. But you can't eat one thing on aisle 15 halfway. That, that, I mean, that's basically what God said. But the Adam and Eve weren't alone in the garden. Because, see, God made giraffes and hippopotamuses, and he made duck build platypuses and he made all kinds of things he made angels too angels are not human beings who die i know there are cartoons that that happens like bugs bunny you know dies and a little angel comes out it's funny but it's not accurate do not learn what's true but from cartoons angels are just creatures that god made they typically are unseen uh because they're spirits but you can see them sometimes and just like us they can decide that i want to follow god or i don't want to follow god and the, the, one, the angel that's sort of in charge of all the angels that didn't want to follow God, his name is Satan, or Lucifer. And he came to Adam and Eve disguised as a serpent, and he spoke to them. Now, I don't understand why Adam and Eve didn't go, ah, snakes don't talk. Is the snakes talk? No. No, not typically. If you think the snakes talk, if they talk to you, go see a psychiatrist. <laughs> What's but, a psychiatrist? A psychiatrist is someone that, that helps crazy people. There's nothing to be ashamed of, by the way. There's nothing wrong with seeing a psychiatrist. But if you do think the snakes talk to you, then that, yeah. But back then, you know, this was not a real snake. It was an angel that was a fallen angel, so they're called demons. His name is Satan, and he came in the form of a snake. And he said, if you eat from that fruit, you won't die. Now, you guys are super smart. I know you're super smart, so you can figure this out. If God says, you eat it, you will die, and Satan says, you eat it, you won't die, what is one of them doing? Lying. lying. Wait, no, lion? No. No, lying. Okay, gotcha. But we're from Massachusetts, so sometimes our words sound a little, you know, we pack the car, you know? So I thought you were doing one of those. Here's some Bible knowledge for you. If you think Satan's lying to you or God lying to you, you're not sure which one it is? It's Satan who's lying to you. Jesus called him the father of lies, and he is. He does not love you. He can act like he loves you. He can tempt you with things that you think you want, and maybe you do, and maybe they're fun for a little while, but they're not good for you. When God gives you a rule, it's because he loves you, cares about you, nurtures you, and knows what's best. But Adam and Eve did exactly what you and I would have done. We did what we thought was best. We looked at the fruit. Oh, it looks good to me. Yeah, maybe God made a mistake on this one, and they ate it. And that is called sin. S-I-N. Anybody know what S-I-N stands for? Yes. Stinky inner nastiness. It's that stinky inner nastiness that's inside of us. The center of sin is I. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to do what you want me to do. I don't want to follow your rules. I don't want to follow your teacher. I don't want to follow your parent. And I don't want to follow your God. I, 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 I. That's sin. We still have it today, all of you and me and everyone you know, except for Jesus. And Adam and Eve, they, they, when they sinned, and God told them this was going to happen, something new was going to come into the world. Sin, which wasn't in the world before, and death. Death is not good. Death is a curse. There's a reason why we don't like it even to this day. It's what people are afraid of more than anything else. Death. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a curse. It's not what was supposed to happen. But when Adam and Eve said, no, I think I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to sin. They broke their relationship with God. God is now distant from them. God is no longer their friend. We are now enemies of God, the Bible says. And if I ended the story here, that would be a real bummer. But I've got great news. Great news. It's that God had a plan. Not, and not just that, he didn't go, oh, what am I going to do now? No, he already knew. From before he even spoke the existence into being, he already had a plan. And it's, and it's starting to play out. What? Be detectives. Look for his plan. Check it out. Because Adam and Eve, they did something new that never happened before. They said, ah, I'm naked and you're naked. That's weird. And they felt embarrassed. Who here has ever felt embarrassed before? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Bye. It's a bad thing. They never felt embarrassed before. That's new. And then they felt ashamed. You ever feel ashamed? That's not good. See all this bad stuff that's starting to pour into their life on them? Now the mosquitoes are biting them. This is bad. And they go, oh, we're naked. And I don't know what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to grab some fig leaves, and we're going to cover ourselves with fig leaves, because uh, that's what we're going to do. That's our plan, and, and we have a, a plan, and that's what we're going to do. 
And then they hear God coming, because God came all the time to talk to them and hang out with them and walk with them. And usually they'd be like, God, this is the best part of my day. I love it when God comes to visit. But now they're like, ah, I'm afraid. Have you ever felt afraid before? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Yeah, see all this bad stuff that now came into the world. Now they're hiding from God. And God says, where are you? Now when God asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. Okay, parents do this all the time. Maybe you're, 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 you're a kid. Let's pretend that you're a bratty kid. None of you guys are bratty kids. But let's pretend you're a bratty kid. And you write all over the wall with a crayon. And your parents come and say, whoa, who, read, who wrote on the wall with a crayon? Do you parents know who wrote on the wall with a crayon? Yes. yes, they know who did it. But why do they ask? Yes. They want you to admit it. See, super smart. I knew you guys were smart. They want you to admit it. They want you to come forward and admit it. And there's something in us, it's called pride. We don't want to do it. Well, I don't know who wrote on the wall with a crayon. Well, we have three crayons in our hand and one in our nose, you know, and because I know how you kids are. And, you know, I don't know who did it. And that's what we do. We go, I don't know. And we, we lie. And we, we, well, someone else told me to do it. And they, they told me to do it. And, you know, and we just don't, there's something about us, it's called pride, that says, I don't want to just admit it and say, you know what? I'm, I'm a doofus. I did it, I'm sorry. I'm a doofus, I did it, I'm sorry. Like, we just don't want to do that. It hurts us to do that, but it's the best thing. And God said to Adam, did you eat of the fruit that I told you not to eat? Now, he knew that he did, of course. And, you know, Adam should have said, you know, God, I'm a doofus, I did it, I'm sorry. But instead he said, the woman you gave me, she, she told me to do it. That's called the blame game. None of you guys play the blame game, do you? Why did you slap your brother? Well, because he stuck his tongue out at me. Well, maybe he did, but it doesn't mean you're allowed to slap him. So that's what we do. We blame him. Well, uh, and, then, and then the woman's like, well, because the serpent tricked me, and that's why I did it. And none of them said, I'm sorry I did it. And why don't we say, I'm sorry I did it? What do we have? It's called pride. Pride. Pride is not good. Now, I'm not saying, like, if you got all A's and I say I'm proud of you. That's not the pride I'm talking about. I'm talking about the pride that says, I want things my way. That kind of pride. I do not want to admit that I'm a twerp and I did something boneheaded. That's pride. That's bad. So here we are. And you know what? God had every right to, to destroy them because when you sin, you die. And if God had killed Adam and Eve then, he would have been just. It would have been okay. But God did something different. And that's why I'm excited. He said, I don't want you to wear fig leaves. Fig leaves that don't impress me. I want you to have leather skins. Now, smarty pants of Fellowship Christian Academy, what must one do to get leather? Just shout it out. Kill a child. Yes, kill a, kill a child. No, an animal. Good. Okay, that would be a way different message. Okay, kill an animal. That's right. One time I asked Adam, what do you do to get uh, skins? And someone said, go to the mall. And that's true. You can get skin that way. But, you, but the mall person had to, someone had to kill an animal. And if you realize there was never death then, the very first death ever in existence was when God himself took an animal. I don't know what kind of animal it was. Maybe it was a cow. Maybe it was a goat. Maybe it was, maybe it was a sheep. And he, and he killed that sheep, or that animal, to provide clothing for Adam and Eve. And how disgusting would that be? Can you imagine Adam and Eve looking down at that dead animal and going, that's gross. You know why? Because sin is gross. Sin is disgusting. And sin requires the death of an animal. And I want you to use your thinking on this, and I know you're smart enough to do this. Did the animal deserve to die? No. no, it wasn't bad. Did Adam and Eve deserve to die? No. Yes. Yes, because yes, they sinned. Okay. Something that wasn't, didn't deserve to die died in the place of something else. When your teacher is sick, who do they send? A substitute. A substitute. A substitute is something that takes someone's place. God is showing you, look, here's what I want to do. You're supposed to die, Adam and Eve, but instead, this animal's going to die in your place. 
when you get excited about a new movie coming out, let's say there's a new Star Wars movie coming out. I love it when you, I grew up on Star Wars. I grew up in the 70s, so I know 70s was like a million years ago. And it was all about Star Wars. And even to this day, I get excited when new Star Wars movies come out because it's a good opportunity for me to get disappointed again. But, uh, but I get excited about it. And what do they send? They, they send out a preview. Do you know what it's called? Uh, trailer. A trailer. And a trailer gives you clues about what the movie's going to be about. Like maybe you see a certain spaceship and you go, oh, I think I see what's going on. And maybe you see a certain like alien or maybe a character that you know and they give you a little a little just a little snippet of a clue and then maybe a month later they do another trailer and you get a little bit more of a clue and then maybe they put out tv ads or they put out other advertisements social media ads and you get a, another clue and another clue and another clue but when do you really understand the movie at what point do you really understand the movie yes when you see it when you see it and that's the if you understand that principle, you can understand the Bible. The Bible is all about God giving you clues, giving you, dropping hints all through the Old Testament. I'm going to redeem humanity because Adam and Eve brought sin and death into the world. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to redeem you. And he's dropping hints in Genesis. He's saying that, that, that an animal is going to die in the place of, of, the, of the people because your fig leaves are not good enough and you need to have other sins. With Cain and Abel, you see it happening again where we're... we're Abel gives a blood sacrifice, and Cain didn't. And the blood sacrifice is what God wanted, because without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You see it in Noah, when there's only one way to get saved. God's way, that's it. You see it through Abraham and Isaac, and through the Passover, and all these things that you will study, and you're going to learn all through. And then you're going to find out that a, 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 a certain Messiah is going to come. He's going to come from Abraham, and then Isaac, and Jacob. He's going to come from Judah. He's going to come from, from Bethlehem. It says in the, in the book of Micah, a thousand years before Jesus came, it's going to say that God's perfect sacrifice is going to have his hands and feet pierced. It says that in Psalm 22. God's giving all these hints, all these teaser trailers in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, you can see what God did. See, this sheep or this animal that died for Adam and Eve in their place is like a picture of what God's going to do someday. It's, it's pointing you to Jesus. And then God created this, like, this whole religious system that he wanted people every year to come to Jerusalem, which is the capital of what country? Israel. Israel. That's right. And you went there, and in Jerusalem, that's the only place in the world where there's a special building. It's called, the, it's not there anymore, but it was there once. Temple. That temple, right. And what did you do at the temple? Well, you didn't do anything because you weren't born then. But what did the people back then do at the temple? They sacrificed animals. So the people had a big problem. They didn't have any heads, but I could fix that. But what they would do is they would, they would, and if they wanted, they said, well, I don't want to go to Jerusalem. I want to worship, I want to sacrifice someone. No, you weren't allowed to do that. God's in charge. He gets to make the rules. God says, I want you to come to the temple. And I'm sure some of the people were women. So what do we paint? Hair. Pretty hair. Not just any hair, pretty hair. Hair. Pretty hair. All the, all the women in this room have pretty hair. So there we go. And they would go to a special person called the priest, and they would bring an animal, and not just any animal. You couldn't bring like your weak, stinky animal that isn't gonna give you much you know, milk anymore or isn't gonna give you much meat because he's just scrawny and everything. No, you had to bring a, a, the best one, an animal without blemish, put a little face on him. He's not gonna need the face because something bad is about to happen to him. And if you laugh at that, there's something wrong with you. And the priest, would kill the animal, typically a lamb, and the lamb, and this was a picture. If you, if the animal dies, it's it's like you put your hand on the animal because it's it's almost like your sin is being transferred to the animal. Now, not really. It's just it's just temporarily. It's to teach you what God's going to do. See, every year you, you can't just do this once and you're done. You can do it over and over and over and over again it's to teach the people that this is how sin is going to be is going to be atoned or how sin is going to be covered or taken care of by the death of a perfect animal. It's coming, it's coming, it's got, this is a teaser trailer. This is a picture over and over again of a savior that's gonna come. And the people would be like, when Lord, when are you gonna send your savior? When are you gonna send your savior? And they wait with faith. And every year, when are you gonna send your favor, your savior? And one year there was, a, there was a prophet, someone who speaks for God. His name is John the Baptist. And he pointed at, the, at Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, behold, and he called him a very funny thing. That if you think about it, you might go, that's a weird name. That's a weird title. But not if you understand the way Judaism was. 
He called them. You know what he called them? The lamb of. That's weird. Does anybody want to be called a lamb? I don't know that I'd be one to call a lamb. Like I'm called a dirty animal. <laughs> That's kind of gross. Do you smell the lamb? They don't smell that good. They smell worse than teenage boys. He needs voice smell well, really stinky too. And uh, so John the Baptist pointed at Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God. See, he's saying that this sacrifice that you do every year over and over and over and over again, that's Jesus. Jesus is that sacrifice. And that's exactly what Jesus did because he knows that our biggest problem is that we're separated from God. It's like God is up here and we're down here. Sin, here's our sin is separating us from God, so we can't get to him. And we try to make fig leaves, don't we? We go, well, I know what I'll do. I'll like a ladder, I'll try to work my way to God. I'll, 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 I'll memorize my Bible verses, and I'll do my homework, and I'll be nice to people, and I'll laugh at the preacher's jokes. That's very important. And I'll, maybe I'll get baptized, and I'll go to church all the time, and I'll help people. And, and those are all good things to do. I'm not saying they're bad, they're very good. Especially if you're laughing at the jokes. That's very, very good. But it's us trying to earn our way to God. It's us putting on fig leaves, and we'll never do it. What we need, instead of us trying to earn our way to God, we need God to come down to us. And that's what he did. When he sent his son, God himself came to earth. He's the Lamb of God. And as the Lamb of God, he allowed himself to have nails put in his hands, nails put in his feet. The perfect Son of God had these Roman nails but through his bones and through his veins and the blood that God shed that day. Did Jesus die because he was a liar? No, no he died because he loves liars. Did he die because he's a murderer? No, no. it's because he loves murderers. Now you might be saying, well, I'm not a murderer, but Jesus said, if you're gonna hate somebody, you're guilty of murder. Who of us can say we've never hated? We've all done that. If you've ever coveted, that's, you want something that belongs to someone else. We all do that. We all, Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself, and none of us do. We're all selfish and naughty and mean, every single one of us. Even me. I know, hard to believe, I know, but it's true. And that's why what we need is we need the Savior. And Jesus, why did he die for our sin? It's so simple, but man, it'll change your life when you really understand this. And I don't know that we can understand it fully yet. He did it. Why do you do it? Because he loves us. Because he loves us. See, you want to know what love is? You look to the cross. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. Propitiation is a big fancy word that means substitute. Christ died on the cross, the Bible says, the righteous, that's him, we're not righteous, Jesus is, for the unrighteous, that's you and me and everybody in the world, to bring us to God. That is love, and it's awesome. It's so good. You know what? And if that, if, and when they, when he, he truly died, and they, they, they used a, a Roman uh, instrument on him to whip him, small leather whip with horrible sharp instruments on the end to, to bruise him and destroy him, to nail him to a cross, and he died. And they put him in a tomb. But thousands of people were put in a tomb. No big deal. But only one did this. Put a tomb over it. They even guarded a tomb. Typically, you don't guard a tomb because dead people don't move. You don't have to guard a dead person. But Jesus is no ordinary person. On that third day, the tomb was empty and Jesus rose from the dead. If you are clapping type of people, that's a good opportunity to clap. Jesus rose from the dead. And that will make some different than else. I want to read you John chapter 2. Because sometimes people, you might ask, have you ever thought about who raised Jesus from the dead? Anybody know who raised Jesus from the dead? God, that's right. But check out John chapter 2. John chapter 2. See if I were really professional, I'd have this all set up already. Ah, sorry, my, my hands are all painty, so it's like it's messing me up. So Jesus was talking to uh, the, the religious leaders in John chapter 2, verse 19. But he was also his disciples, the people who followed him, were listening in. And Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Who will raise the temple? Jesus, Jesus will raise it up. See, 
It's, yes, it's true that God raised Jesus from the dead, but Jesus raised himself from the dead. And I know you're thinking, wait, wait, he's talking about the temple there. He's not talking about his body. Keep reading. It says, what they exclaimed? It has taken 46 years to build the temple. My fingers. And you can rebuild it in three days? But the Bible, look, the Bible says right there, it interprets itself. It says, but when Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Jesus raised himself from the dead. That's amazing. That's why he's God. That's why he's Lord. That's why he's in charge. And what happened was, so you have this tomb, and it's, it's full. It has a dead body in it. And, and his, his disciples and those who loved him, men and women, were waiting because it was a Sabbath day, and so they, they can't do any work on that day. But on that Sunday morning, on the third day, they went to the tomb, and boy, were they surprised because the tomb was empty and was open. Usually tombs aren't open. There was a huge stone, but the stone had been thrown out of the way. And, the, and three women, they went into the, they walked into the tomb. It was kind of creepy, but they did it because they wanted to anoint Jesus' body. That means they put all kinds of perfumes and oils and things that smell nice. It's a way to honor the dead. They thought they were going to find a dead body. But boy, were they surprised. And they had a big problem. You know what their problem is? They don't have heads. They don't have heads. That's right. But we can fix that. Now, they're women, so what do I do with the heads? Good luck, pretty hair. hair. Right. Pretty hair, but no brains. <laughs> kidding, 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 kidding. And when they went into the tomb with their big brains and pretty hair, they did not find the body of Jesus. They just found a linen cloth that he was buried in and no body because Jesus rose from the dead. What they discovered is that Jesus... And this is why we celebrate, not just at Easter time, but all year round. This is exciting. Jesus is alive. And this isn't like a nice story, like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I told, like, like Cinderella's a nice story. And, but it's not really true. You guys know that, right? And, you know, we're not teaching you about Jesus because it's just a nice story. No, it's actually true. Jesus was seen alive by over 500 witnesses. If it weren't true, when, they, when the disciples started preaching Jesus, people would be like, no, we didn't see his body. What are you talking about? It would, it, you would never have heard of Christianity today. The fact that Christianity is still around, even though hundreds of religions started at that time, and nobody remembers almost any of them, is because there, there really was an empty tomb. There really was a body, but not just a dead body. They saw him alive. He was seen with many, uh, many convincing proofs. Even his hands still had the holes in them. He died, he rose from the dead physically. He wasn't just a spirit or a ghost or, or, or like a, a, in, a, in people's imagination. No, they could touch his hands and touch the holes that the, the nails did. They could touch his side. His, his disciple Thomas in particular said, well, I don't know, until I see Jesus for myself, I'm not going to believe it. And Jesus said, touch my side. Put your hand in. It's me. It's me. I rose from the dead. He was, all these people saw him and they gave their life for him. See, people will die for a lie, but people won't die if they know it's a lie. People die only if they're, if they're deceived. But so many people were willing to die because they saw the risen Christ and you couldn't convince them otherwise. Men, women, children, all kinds of people, even teenage boys. I know, they're crazy, but it's true. Teenage boys are the worst. Try to get them to take a shower. Yep. There's a thing called deodorant, boys. Look into it. All right. If you want evidence for the resurrection and you're good at memorizing, risen.great-news.org risen.great-news.org great news it's great news and if you go to risen there's tons of evidence christianity is not something that we want you to believe because wouldn't it be nice if no god has given us evidence faith doesn't mean you believe something without evidence that's not what faith means faith means that you believe something you don't see but it can have great evidence and god has given us lots of evidence risen.great-news.org. And what I, what I love about the resurrection, I love many things about the resurrection, is I love it because, see, I've had people break their promises to me in the past, and it hurts. Maybe you've had people break your promises. 
And sometimes we break promises because we're dopes. Sometimes we do it because we just made a mistake. We didn't mean it. Or we, we, mis we misunderstood something, or, or we miscommunicated, or we misunderstood, or something like that. But see, as human beings, we will break our promises from time to time. The resurrection is, tells us that God kept his promise. Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. I'll wrap up quickly because I'm over time. <laughs> I get excited. The cross makes you think of what letter of the alphabet? A T. A T. And Jesus, he had a message for people. The risen Christ. See, if somebody dies and rises from the dead, you obey them. You do what they say. And his message to the people was to turn and trust. Turn means to repent. And that's something that we don't want to do because of our pride. Our pride says, no, I don't want to turn. See, we're all born. We love our sin. Sin is fun. And we don't love God telling us what to do. We don't love God's commands. And turning is saying, no, I love God and his commands, and I don't love sin. And that's hard to do because of pride. But your pride is not worth it. Kill your pride. Get rid of it. Don't listen. Just say, I'm not going to listen to you, pride. I'm going to follow the Lord. And trust. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you, if you uh, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He said, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans chapter 10. Jesus said, to repent and believe the gospel, Mark 1, 15. Repent is to turn, believe is to trust. What are the two T's? Turn. Turn and trust. Come on, let's hear it nice and now. What are the two T's? Turn. Turn. Whenever you see a T for the rest of your life, I want you to remember, just like you said it, turn and trust. The phone company wants you to get saved so bad, they put up gigantic wooden T's all over the country. No matter where you drive. See these big T's the phone company put up? Isn't that nice? And you will remember to turn and trust. And if one of these falls down because it gets, like, icy or windy, they send people to put it right back up again. Because they really want you to, what do they want you to do? Yeah. Now you know what this stands for, these things. Okay, hey, it's not really, it doesn't stand for that. I just say that because it helps you remember it. All right, so sue me. <laughs> Guys, here's the thing. Jesus wasn't just alive back then. Jesus is alive in closing. Today. And that's why we're excited about Jesus. That's why we celebrate Easter, but we also celebrate it all year round. Because Jesus is alive. He's not dead. He has authority. And he commands all men and women everywhere to repent. And he will receive you. He will forgive you. He will love you. He will nurture you. He will be good to you. He will keep his promises to you. He will use you. He will bless you. He will bring you to the kingdom of God. We turn and trust. I pray that you will do that today if you've not done it yet. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all the young men and women here. Uh, none of them are here by accident. They're all here for a reason. And even the littlest ones are old enough to understand that we sin and Jesus forgives when we turn and trust. We thank you for Jesus. We, we don't want to just be saved only. We want to be saved and grow in Christ, in our relationship with God that we'll have love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness and gentleness, faithfulness and self-control and that we will give you glory and honor and when you call us to come home you'll say we will get to hear well done good and faithful servant and we will praise you Hosanna through all eternity and never stop. Thank you for the young men and women here at the school. I pray that you bless them in Jesus name and all the happy kids at Fellowship Christian Academy say yeah. Have a great day. Sorry for being a little long. If you want to come pet the dog, do it quickly and then get a class and learn your math tables and calculus and whatever else you learn. Hey everybody, this is Mark. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please click like and subscribe to the channel. Please visit our website, loop-15.org. We have tons of free resources. Everything's free to help you to become a better more effective ambassador for Jesus Christ. There's also information at blue-15.org about what my family and I do as missionaries here in New England and really everywhere through the internet. Please share these resources with other people you know through social media and may God bless you as you take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost. We love Jesus. How can we not share him with others? Have a great day.